Father, we just want to thank you so much because you're so amazing and wonderful. And we just want to say happy Abba Day. Thank you so much for being our Father. And Father, we ask you to take an active part in fathering our families. Would you please step into our family relationships? Would you step in to those ones that don't yet know you? Would you step in and father the ones that are finding life difficult? We ask you to be a father to us and to our families. Yes. We thank you for that. We thank you that your heart is the heart of a father who loves his family, who loves his children. So we thank you. We thank you so much. You are so good to us. You are so good. And Jesus, you are our King. And we once again give our allegiance to you as our King. We are here to execute your pleasure as our King and your pleasure alone. And Holy Spirit, you are the wealth and the wonder of God. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being called alongside us to help us, to be our strength, to be our, our counsellor, to be our intercessor, just to be our help, our advocate. Holy Spirit, we rely upon our friendship with you, our fellowship with you. May it grow ever deeper. And so this afternoon, we release everything in this meeting to you. We thank you for the angels that surround us. We thank you for the wall of fire around us and the glory in our midst. We thank you for your plans, for your purposes, for what you want here today. Because we don't want anything but what you want. Just your will. Just your will. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. And uh, and I honour... What are your Apostle Prophets, Logan and Sharon? Um, Here today we're going to commission them internationally because they walk with open heaven. And we just welcome Patty back. Welcome, Patty. Good to see you again. So, and and the guests, welcome. Welcome. Holy Spirit, we ask for revelation Mm -hmm. and we ask for impartation today that we would not be the same as when we came. In Jesus' name. So we're just going to read Ephesians 4, um, starting in verse 11. Down to 14. And I do have the Amplified Classic, so I apologise, but it's the one I use. And his gifts were varied. Jesus himself appointed and gave men to us, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. His intention, his intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints and his consecrated people so that they should do the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body of the church, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God so that we arrive at a really mature manhood. The completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and the completeness that is found in him. So then we may no longer be children, tossed like ships to and fro between chance gusts of teaching, wavering with every changing wind of doctrine. The prey of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men Gamblers engaged in every shifting form of trickery in inventing errors to mislead. But, I love the buts of God, but let our life lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly. Enfolded in love, let us grow up in every way and in all things into him, who is the head, Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. And we'll just finish with 16. For because of him, the whole body, the church, in all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together 
by the joints and ligaments with which it is supplied when each part with power adapted to its need is working properly in all its function, grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. And love is key and, and, and foundational and it's everything. We're to speak the truth in love. We are to live love. We are to be built up and find our maturity in Christ, in love. And I love Oh, I just love I just love God. I just love I just love God. But there are he names five different gifts. The people, Jesus has described people as gifts. Yeah, right? People are gifts. Whether they're fivefold or whether and people are gifts. But in this case he's saying there are five types of people. There are five giftings, there are five functions. And the work is to bring the body of Christ into unity, into oneness into the full stature of Christ. Because the fivefold do not do the work of the ministry. The body of Christ does the work of the ministry. You do the work of the ministry. The fivefold are simply housekeepers. Whatever it is you need to become successful in what God has called you to do, we are to provide you with what is needed. We are to provide you with what you require with what you need to be equipped with so that you can fulfill the call of God upon your life. All right, that's why in our open heaven ministries, plural, it's not about the vision of open heaven. It is your visions. We are here to serve your vision. You're not here to serve mine. I'm here to serve yours. And so, you know, when you get a leading of the Holy Spirit, when you get something that you feel God is saying, is something you want to do, come to me, talk to me. And as you talk to me, we can open up the way, we can get you whatever training or whatever resource, whatever it is you require, we can work on it and get it and release you into what God is calling you to do. Because the last thing we want to be is spectators. We want to be doing what he's called us to be. Right? So, but the, the five giftings... I've got, I've got it listed in my Bible, all starting with G. The apostles govern, the prophets guide, the evangelist gathers, the pastor guards, and the teacher grounds. And we need that. We need each other. You know, this, if you, that's why in the New Testament, there's only about less than five places where pastor is mentioned. Sometimes it's a bishop or an overseer. Once or twice, the word pastor. Over 140 times apostle. Over, over 100 times prophet. So the, church, the, the house, every house needs a five-fold administration. So that you can... Now this, this place is heavy prophetically. And also there's, there's quite a few apostles, budding apostles coming up. So, and we've got some teachers, some great teachers here. So the thing is, as we come together... As we, we allow the fivefold that God wants to come together and emerge, we can build everyone up and release you into your destiny. In the first church, in the, the very first century church, apostles witnessed to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was the very foundation. He's risen. We've seen it with our own eyes. The apostles would talk about the resurrection. The prophets would guide and direct the, the early churches, the early ministries in the name of the Lord. Apostles went out first. Everybody in that upper house has an apostolic DNA. That 120 people that were waiting for the, <coughs> the, the fire of the Holy Ghost, each and every one of them had an apostolic DNA because that's Jesus. Jesus is apostolic. He's also prophetic. He's also evangelistic. He's also a teacher. He's also a pastor. But it starts with an apostolic DNA because God sent Jesus and apostles are the sent ones. They're the ones that go and establish beachheads. They're the ones that go and take new ground. They're the ones that go and establish new ministries. But then they, they raise up people to take their place. So they, there's other ground that they've got to take, other things that they've got to do. So the prophets guide and direct in the name of the Lord. The evangelist announce Christ crucified, Christ resurrected, Jesus the Messiah, but he is the world's Lord. So that's when the, the evangelists announce good news, everybody. Peace on earth, goodwill to all men. That's what the evangelists announce, you know, like it's not about, you know, give your life to Jesus Christ, you go to hell. That's got nothing to do with it. It's give your life to Jesus because God loves you so much. He's got such a better plan for your life than what you're living. He wants you to have health and, and prosperity. He wants you to find the, the destiny that he's got for you, the fulfillment in life, the things that you've been looking for. It's all found in Jesus. So you've got the apostles 
apostle who witnesses to the resurrection, the prophet who hears from God to direct the early church. You've got the evangelist saying, the only thing I've got to speak is good news. Like that's all I've got is good news and his name is Jesus. And then you've got the, the, uh, the, te- uh, the pastor who looked after the young. They had to be taught. They taught how to pray. They had to be discipled. See, the thing is, a disciple, I really don't like this, but a disciple is a disciplined one. <laughs> disciplined one. But it simply means that you follow Jesus. right? And when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, self-control, it's not about self-control. It's about control of the self by the Holy Spirit, yes. by the Spirit of God. It's not about us, it's about him. The life that he's got for you, the life of blessing, the life of goodness, the life of hope, the life of joy, the life of, of just just so many good things that God has in his plans for you. And so this is what the pastor is. I want to train you. He says, I want, I want to train you up so that you can take full possession of everything the Father's got for you so that you can walk in intimacy with him, so that you can understand the flow of the Holy Spirit, so you can know the protocols of heaven, so you know how to bring heaven to earth, so that you can establish a colony of heaven in your own life. You know that your family is a colony of heaven upon the earth. I love that. I love that. And then you've got the teachers. Now, I've, I've heard some great teachers, awesome teachers, But can I say boring? Because there's no anointing. What they bring forth is great teaching, come from great intellect, great understanding of the word, but where's the Holy Ghost? Where's the fire of God on the words that come out of their mouth? Where's the power that imparts something into us as we listen? So the teachers in the early church were something different altogether because they'd been touched by the fire of God. They'd been touched by the flame of God. And they they actually... Uh, developed and, and, and trained the understanding of people, but, but how to move in the Spirit, how to get the revelation. Because Jesus said, you know, you don't live by every word of God. You don't. You don't live by every word. You live by every revelation. You live by the rhema of the word of God, the scripture that God is speaking to you about, that, that one that pierces your heart, that scripture you can't get away from, that scripture that's always dancing before your eyes, in your ears, that scripture that's always talking to you, that scripture, that's a revelation that God is wanting to impart to you because in that revelation there's a key to victory. In that revelation there's a chance to overcome. In that revelation there is something that is going to unlock the future for you and so the teachers are to impart the word of God in such a way that the power of the revelation of the Holy Ghost on the living word of Jesus Christ wow come on that is going to impart future destiny for you right the Holy Ghost is alive and then you mix him with the living word of God wow and then you hear people say but I read the word of God and it's I just can't get into it I question whether they're born again I understand some people don't like reading. You can listen to it. But when you understand that Jesus is the word and the Holy Spirit's your teacher, oh, come on, the revelations that he wants you to walk by. You know, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come so that you don't walk into traps of the enemy, so that you don't take the wrong the wrong route, that you don't go down the wrong path. He will show you the future. He will show you things to come. He is so amazing, so wonderful, so glorious. He yes, is the God. wealth of God. Yes. You know, like, you, and you, you mix that. When you read the word and you pray in tongues as you're reading the word, you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got Jesus, and you've got the Father so in love with what you're doing that things change. So you've got to learn to live by the revelation. You've got to be sons of God living by the leading of the Holy Spirit, not by what your senses tell you, not by what you feel, not by your emotions, because that's living as, a, as an ordinary person in the world who does not, is not born again. They are led by their soul. And we are not led by our soul. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God, led by the Holy Spirit. He's got so much more for you than what you understand. So much more. And his heart is longing to pour it out. And so he's put this these five different types of people, five different functions, five giftings in together so that the body can be fully equipped. And when it talks about the word equipped, it's talking about actually setting bones in place. Like a broken bone, you need to set it in place. That's what they do. They are equipping, they are setting the body in place so that we come into a unity of the fullness of the stature of Christ. 
that you actually reveal Christ in who you are and how you speak and how you live, that you can actually see the miracles, you know, that people get healed by your shadow, that you can pray about things and they'll multiply. The fullness of the stature of Christ is living in you. John, uh, Jesus said in John 14, 12, it's greater things that you do, that I do, that you will do. And he said, you're going to do greater things than I because I've gone to the Father. Man, I haven't even multiplied the fish and the loaves yet, but I'm working on it. But sometimes that happens on the mission field. You know, like it might not happen here, but on the mission field where you, you're feeding the crowd and there's, there's not enough, but you pray, it multiplies. Amen. The miracle aspect of Jesus Christ is alive and well in each and every one of you. You walk in it. You walk in it. This is who you are. This is what you've got. And so the whole thing is putting the body of Christ back into a correct relationship with each other. Right? With each other. So he says you're going to equip the saints. You're going to build up the body of Christ for, uh, for the work of the ministry. You're going to build up the body of Christ till it's unified. Not, look, we are diverse, but our unity is Jesus Christ. Right? Our unity is found in him. Build up the body of Christ so that they've got the full knowledge of Jesus and we can express him in the stature of his fullness. This is so important. We've got to come into the oneness of faith, which is simply believing what Jesus believes. I'm not interested in other people's opinions. I'm interested in what Jesus believes and in what he says and what he does because that's where I found life. That's where I find truth. That's where I find happiness and joy and provision and prosperity and everything else. So basically the body of Christ, the fivefold is to work with the body of Christ in such a way that the body of Christ, whether it's this house or every house, let's believe for the whole body of Christ, for the whole body of Christ to be filled to the brim with Christ, like sloshing around with Christ on the inside. And every time they take a step, you know, some of Christ strips out over somebody else. But, you know, full of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Like you're missing out on nothing. You lack nothing. You lack nothing. God withholds nothing from us. He is wanting you to know the sheer joy of abundant life. And in that abundance of life, the people of the world want to know what you've got. Because they don't have it. They're not happy. They're not joyful. Their provision isn't secure. They're not sure where they're going to go when they die if they think about it. They're looking for things to fill the void that only Jesus can fill in their lives. We've all been there. But when Jesus came, we were brought into a oneness with him. Like he's in us and we're in him. And we are so one with Jesus that there's no separation. You can't be separated. You're just where the Spirit of the Lord is. You know, it's one with the Spirit of God. We are just this, this oneness with Jesus. And it cannot be separated. Cannot be separated. When the Father looks at us, he sees Jesus and us and us in him. And then the Father's in us. And everything's just this, yeah. this harmony of unity. And he's saying, I want to spread this throughout the body of Christ. I want to spread this throughout the body. But you've got to know who you are in Christ, right? And so this is where the fivefold comes in and the fivefold helps. Because each and every one of you, in what God has called you to do, you will be breaking new ground. You will be doing things that you've never done before, apostolic. You will be hearing from God for yourself or for someone near you, or someone will speak into your life, prophetic. You will find someone who needs Jesus mm -hmm. and they're prepared to listen. You will be evangelistic. Mm -hmm. You will find that there will be people drawn to you because they want to know what you want or they want to know how to pray like you do or they, they want to understand things. So you're going to pastor them, mm -hmm. shepherd them. And then you're going to find people who say, look, I just don't understand tithing or I don't understand how your family is the way it is. And you're going to say, let me share what I know with you and you will teach. So each and every one of you will fulfill one of the aspects of the fivefold because that's part of being a disciple, mm -hmm. right? But you're the ones that go out into the mission field. Amen. You're the ones that are out there every day. We are just to provide you with what you need. 
You get in touch with us for prayer. You say, I don't understand this. What can you help me with that? I think God is wanting to do with this. Will you pray with me for confirmation? Whatever it is, that's what we're here for. But you are the ones that God has called to ministry. So welcome to the ministry. <laughs> but it's exciting and it's wonderful when you follow Jesus. And it's that simple. You just walk with him. You just walk with him. Right? And so we have the fivefold ministry, which is simply to equip, to build you up, to um, make sure that you're not children tossed to and fro. Remember that story when Jesus... Uh, was in the boat and he was asleep on the cushion and there's this big storm raging and the boat's starting to sink and then the disciples wake him up and said, hey, Jesus, the boat's sinking, well, wow, help. And he stood up and he rebuked the wind. If you look at Ephesians, the wind is false doctrine. And he was facing a principality on that lake. So he was rebuking the principality. And he was commanding the sea to be at peace. So the situations, you command peace. But false doctrine, you rebuke. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's things to learn, things to grow. So we need to grow up. I remember, for those of you who were here when we had Bev Watkins out years ago, when Robert Henderson came out with Bev Watkins, because um, basically this is saying in Ephesians 4, body of Christ, we need you to grow up. But Bev Watkins says you also need to learn how to die quietly. <laughs> you know, when, when you've got to put the flesh away, when you think, oh, I just really want to give that person a piece of my mind, don't do it, just put off the old, die quietly. So it's recognising that. So, but the whole thing, the reason that we need to grow into the, and, and mature is that we will not be tossed around, that we won't be like babies. They're not going to be tossed around by the winds of doctrine. We're not going to be caught up with unscrupulous people. You know, the problem with most believers is that they are believers. And so we get taken for scams. This is a good business investment. You need to do this. And because we believe, we go, yes, but we need to discern. And so this is maturing in all of those ways. We need to, we need to mature so that we're no longer vulnerable to trickery, to deception, to wrong doctrines to being unsettled or shaken by circumstances that are challenging because we live in an unshakable kingdom yeah. Yeah. with an unshakable, unchanging king. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have to reflect the nature of the kingdom we serve. Yeah. He says, I don't want you to be children. I don't want you to be immature because one of the things is ignorance for a believer mm -hmm. is dangerous. What you don't know will hurt you. That's why we're told in 2 Timothy 2.15, study the word. Yes. Study the word. Don't just read it. Study the word uh, and be a workman approved by him. And then in this, verse 15, it says, but let your life lovingly express truth. Enfolded in love. Grow up in every way into all things, into him who's the head, even Christ the Messiah. He says, but regardless of the being tossed around by winds of doctrine, regardless of all of these things that are happening, but if you speak the truth in love, if you are enfolded in love, you will be unshakable, you will be unchanged. Nothing can stop that. And so recognising that love and truth is an atmosphere that produces maturity. Now, I've had people speak the truth to me, scripture, truth, but there was no love. And I felt like I'd been beaten with a hammer. It was so legalistic. It was so religious. Just this, but the word says, Bleh, you know, but there was no love. And I've had love expressed, but the truth wasn't applied. And that didn't bring healing. But when you have love and truth together, that's the key. That's everything. That's, that's everything. So love actually gives truth a voice. Truth would not have a voice without love. Think about it. Truth can be uttered harshly, coldly, demandingly. I'm telling you the truth. But all we all do is get hurt by that. 
So love actually gives truth a voice. Truth gives integrity to love. So love gives truth a voice, but truth gives integrity to love. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, yeah. that he fills our hearts with the love of the Father. He just continually pours in the love of God. Like, Suzette, you've had a rough day. Here's a double dose of love. You know, here's some more love. I just keep dripping it in, Suzette. Like, oh, forget the drip. You need an overflow. But he's continually working to release love in our lives. Mm -hmm. And if love is not our foundation... God is not our foundation because God is love. So everything comes back to love and truth. The whole body of Christ should be throbbing with a pulse of love. When people talk to us, they should feel the throb of love. Verse 16, let me finish with this. For because of him, the whole body, the whole body, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments with which it is supplied, when each part, with power adapted to its need, is working properly in all its functions, grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. We are building an edifice of love, building things higher and higher through love. So every part has to be in the right place. Every part has to know its part. Every part has to be empowered with what it needs to do what it needs to do. And every part has to grow into maturity. And then the love just pulsates through the body of Christ and people in the world are touched with eternal deposits and richness of the Father. Love is everything. Truth is freedom. But love is God. Love is God. He loves you so much. He sent Jesus. He loves you so much that he gave you his own plan for your life so that you'd be fulfilled, so that you'd be happy, so that you'd find what you're looking for, so that your desires would be met. I mean, he's just so gracious and so generous. Yeah. But it all stems from love. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, I just I want you to mature. I want you to mature in love. So as you mature in love and every part finds its place. You know, sometimes we can get upset with people in the body of Christ. And I'm not the only one, I'm sure. There are times you think, I can't believe they're a Christian. I, do you hear what they said to me? You know, we carry on. But if we understand that they're a part of the body of Christ, which means they're a part of me. If they're hurting, I'm hurting. If they're lacking, I'm lacking. If they're in overflow, I'm in overflow because we're one body and every cell connects. And not only are we in covenant with an almighty God through Jesus Christ and the power of his blood, that covenant extends this way as well. The cross is this way and this way. And so that covenant love flows between each and every member of the body of Christ. And Jesus said the world will know who he is because we love each other. Love is essential. You want to mature, you want to grow, you want to fulfill everything God's called you to do. We need to love like God loves. And we can only do that as we allow him to work in us. And he works in us through the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist. And I got that order wrong, but it doesn't matter what order they're in. But we need them to bring us into wholeness. We need each and every one of the fivefold. And where we've gone wrong in the past is that it's just been the pastor. Mm -hmm. And then he's got a team of pastors. I was at a church the other day, executive pastors, media pastors. Oh, there's about six different types of pastors. And I'm thinking, prophet? Where's the prophet? 
Where's the apostle? So let me tell you something. If you're in ministry, you guys in ministry, and you're looking, you know, when it's time to hand the baton on because we get to about to 119 or whatever it might be, and we get to hand the baton on, you cannot give it to anybody with a pastoral soul because we've seen apostolic pastors, you know, pastors that are apostolic and they have a, um, it's time for them to move on and they're passing it on to someone in the younger generation. They pass it to someone who's a pastor and so the whole apostolic element of the ministry dies and it becomes another church. If you pass something on, it must always be passed to someone with an apostolic heart. Otherwise, it will not last. And the apostle and the prophet must work together. So the first time I saw it actually working, I was shocked. I was horrified. Like, doesn't this guy know how to run a meeting? Oh, seriously? I'm sitting there. I've never seen anything like it. And it was Robert Henderson and Beverly Watkins, my first trip to the States to be with them. And, uh, and Robert's ministry. And then Beverly gets up and takes the mic. And she said, this is what I see in the spirit realm. And then Robert takes the mic back and he, said, and he lands the thing and then she takes the mic back. And I'm thinking, doesn't he know how to control a meeting? I'd never seen this. It looked bizarre. You know, it looked so different. But the Lord spoke to me. He said, this is how it functions. This is how it functions. So we don't want prophetic words in the car park. We don't want prophetic words you know, just all the prophets, we want them in the midst of the meeting saying, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit realm so the apostle can land the thing. The apostle can't necessarily see or hear like a prophet does. They're not, they, that might be their secondary gifting. But the apostle is the one that will manifest it. They're the governor. But we need the prophetic. We need the seer. We need what they bring because otherwise, what do we know if we're manifesting the right thing, right? Need to know. It's a need to know. So we need the, pro the pro prophets. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> otherwise, it doesn't work. And so, you know, I'm giving you people, you people, sorry, you saints, I'm giving you the prophetic ones within here you have permission. I have been looking for this for years, thinking they're going to get it, they're going to get it. So you haven't got it, so I'm telling you. <laughs> you have permission to get up in the middle of something and say, this is what I'm seeing, so that we can deal with it in the spirit realm and bring to pass on the earth what the Father wants. I don't want it kept just until worship. I don't want it kept until we're around communion. If you are getting something in the realm of the spirit, it is your spiritual responsibility as a prophetic person to give rise to what you are hearing or seeing so that the apostle can release it. Otherwise, nothing changes. And we are stuck in a same kind of church meeting kind of stuff. And that's finished. Because as this starts to happen and the apostolic and the prophetic work together, this turns into a hub, an apostolic hub, which releases people and, and changes destinies. But it doesn't happen until you guys take your place because the work of the ministry belongs to you. I'm stuck here. <laughs> Go for it. I'm at the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> so understand too that there will be times we get it wrong. That's okay. It is perfectly okay if we don't get it 100% right. Because God is the master redeemer. And how are we going to learn unless we make some mistakes? Right? It's a family. It's a safe place. But this, this is where we're headed. <laughs> but this is where we're headed. So you have permission to do this because half the time I'm looking around trying to catch somebody's eye, like somebody must have something because I'm looking for something, you know, like I know something's happened in the spirit realm, but I'm the apostle, 
right? So I'm looking around, everybody's got their eyes down. <laughs> and nobody's looking at me. So I want you to get involved. Because otherwise this will never be an apostolic hub. It will never be what God's called it to be if you guys won't step up and be a part of this. All right? So, on the basis of that, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what, what she's doing. But on the basis of that, because things have to change. We have had church this way for so long, for hundreds of years. And nations are still being sh goat nations. People are still dying and going to hell. People are still having terminal illnesses. Kids are still on drugs with no way to get off them. People are still unemployed. There are four generation, like, welfare families. Four generations. So understand that when the message we carry is Jesus Christ, his love, his power, his goodness for people. But the way we convey the message has to change. So as you start to get involved and step up with a prophetic word or whatever it might be, and we start to land some things and we turn this no longer a church. It will always be the family. But it needs to become an apostolic hub so the ecclesia can take its rightful place. So what I'm basically saying is it's time for all of us to grow up. But you love me so I can say it, right? <laughs> so please, when you come here, ditch church outside. Come inside and just think freedom, joy, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to orchestrate, okay? Please don't think church. We don't always have to we have worship at the beginning. We don't always have to do anything anyway. It is out, will be as Holy Spirit dictates. That's it. Right? That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Veishmarecha Yae Adonai Panavelecha Vihunecha Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Vesem Lucha Shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face shine upon you May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Amen. Baruch Hashem. Thank you. Every time you pray that, you must just get a double blessing yourself. You bless us so much. Thank you, Father. So thank you, everyone.